Yeah. All right, yeah. fire away. Uh, what's what's Simon? Ah, uh, it's minor. Just hyperextended it a little bit, so he's okay. Yeah. Is he gonna get any MRI? No, uh, he, he's okay. Jimmy, you want to give us a kind of a take on the, where you guys are at? We're from Eugene, Oregon. We're doing a preseason Pac-12 tour and just kind of checking in with you guys. We're doing good. Yeah, we're up here in San Bernardino. We've had a lot of really good practices. I'm excited about the, the direction of our team. How about Brett? Brett's doing great. He's uh, he's had a great camp so far. He, uh, you know, he's making progress every day. Excited about the direction he's headed in. As, as the uh, sort of was a big chunk of your offense last year, uh, what do you expect out of him this year to sort of grow a little bit more even? Uh, he just needs to become a better decision maker. You know, when to throw it away, when to get out of bounds, when to slide. Uh, things like that, just natural progression that, you know, a young guy, the young guy makes is the more he plays, the better he'll get. So we're excited about him. At the running back position, then. Uh, yeah, we got five guys. We'll work. Although I'll play. Yeah. What What gives you uh, reason to be encouraged there? With uh, after Jonathan left, you see now you got a group that you got to sort of figure yeah. out who's going to do what. Well, we know what they're going to do. They're all five going to play, and uh, we like them all. They're good players. They've been in the program, so. Uh, you know, we think we've got a really good group there. You know, you're not going to have Jonathan Franklin, but you've got you've got a, a, a cluster of guys there that can all get it done at this level. Something's going on. Yeah. Is the DB situation clarified the last few days? Or since no, you've been not at all. It's probably become a little more muddy with uh, Johnny Johnson going down. Yeah, but I like the group. I think it's a talented group. It's just it's just extremely inexperienced, as we all know. So. Uh, but you know, I, I see progress out of uh, a lot of the young guys. You know, like you see uh, Priest making big strides. He's really talented. You see, to me, um, Tyler Foreman has really improved the last couple practices. I, I don't know, you know, how he fits into the rotation or if he does. You know, the real surprise probably in the secondary has been Jalen Brown. You know, his moving from linebacker into the secondary and you know, how he's adapted to a position that he's really never played before. You know, if we were to go out and, and, and uh, play a game tonight, he'd probably be our starting nickel. Mm -hmm. So that says a lot about where he is, but it also says a lot about our lack of experience. You know? Do you think the fact that you know we've seen in college football the spreads and the offense really take a lot of leaps in the last couple of years? We always hear that it's all cyclical, and at some point it's going to turn back. Uh, is there anything that makes you think it's going to turn, start turning back this year toward a more that the defenses are going to have better answers for those offenses? I don't know. I mean, I think we just have to wait and let it play out. You know, I know the national champions don't do it, yeah. so, you know, maybe people start to copy that a little bit. Um, I don't know. I agree with you in the fact that it does. The trends, you know, come and go. The game changes continually. I just don't know where it is with regards to that. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see what happens at the college level and at the NFL level. You know, how a guy like Chip Kelly affects, you know, affects the NFL. So. Would be interesting. Jim, you've probably already been asked this, but uh, your your thoughts on the what people some people are calling the clowny rule with this you know the reviews this year and a guy might get ejected for a for a hit and it could carry over to the next game. Your thoughts on that kind of thing? Um, I'm not a fan of it. I think it's really difficult. I think it puts a real burden on the officials. And I you know I've been doing this a long long time and uh, I've seen a lot of hits that look one way in person and they even look different immediately after on review replay than they do maybe 24 hours you know and I think that what's difficult is to judge intent you know for the official on the field and the official that's that's replaying it whether that's the official on the field or somebody in the booth and you know the ramifications are so drastic I mean, you're talking about kicking a kid out of a game and uh, the way that could affect his team and the way it affect his career uh, I, I don't like it at all. Um, I think it's, in my opinion, um, I mean, like I said, I've been coaching for 29 years. It's the worst rule I've ever heard of, and I'm not, you know, I'm not overstating that. But we got to, we got to, you know, people above my pay grade made that decision, and so we've got to, we've got to deal with it. But Javon Clowney, if you, if anyone doesn't think that was just like a beautiful football play, then <laughs> that was a beautiful football play by a great football player. What's the strength of your defense is, as you've seen it unfold here in camp? Uh, I think the front seven. You know, we, uh, we've got a good group of defensive linemen. We've got a really good group of linebackers. We can rush the passer. Uh, you know, we've got to overcome 
that lack of experience in the secondary, though. And thankfully, we've got a decent pass rush, you know, because your coverage's best friend is a good pass rush. So we've got to be able to get there and affect the quarterback. Did you jump out of your chair when you saw that clown he hit like a lot of people do? Oh, I just thought it was just this amazing play by an amazing athlete. You know, and I listen, I understand player safety. Nobody, you guys have been around me enough to understand how important it is to me that players are safe, um, especially when we're talking about head injuries, you know, because those are lifelong injuries. But I also think that uh, that the rule, the, the, the ramifications, the penalty is so drastic. And if they get it wrong, mm-hmm. and then you come back on, on a Sunday or a Monday, and you say, ah, we shouldn't have kicked this kid out of a game. Well, these kids only get so many games. You know, they're not professional athletes. You know, their career might not go on for another 10 years. It might go on for another three or four games, you know, if it's the, if it's the wrong guy. And to penalize them uh, for something that they potentially didn't do, I think would be a real tragedy. And if it affects the outcome of a game, I think it's even worse yet. So, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. I know the officials will do the best job that they can. We've had the officials out here. Uh, you know, they, they seem to have a pretty good grasp of it. Although the other day we had a play out here with our officials when they said that that hit would have resulted in ejection. They came back to me about 45 minutes later and said, you know, we thought about it and it wouldn't result in ejection. Well, okay, so like do I get to now bring him, like go put your stuff back on and come back out or how does that work? You know, so just, uh, I don't know, I don't don't think it was... uh, yeah, I don't like it. Is that the kind of thing where you even talk to like a guy like Anthony Barr about that? No, I don't. I, we talk about it as a team. Uh, we go through the hits. Uh, the NCAA put out a great video with Kirk Herbstreit uh, talking to the players, showing examples of uh, what was legal and what would be deemed illegal now, what would result in ejection. And it's, you know, still not crystal clear. So, uh, but it's a rule we have to respect and we have to adhere to. You know, I just, I'm just hopeful that in none of our games something happens where one of our players, you know, makes a play, gets ejected, and then oof, that's A. And then the worst part of it, if they came back and said, oh, we screwed that one up. Because those kids, they don't get that game back, you know. There's no do-overs. So I would imagine that the, the prudent officials, and I think our officials are very good, would, would err on the side of, not ejecting, you know, enforce the penalty, but not ejecting. It's just too drastic. How Which about is, adding in another re- review into the well, ones we've already review? They ha- it's a reviewable. No, I'm saying that adding yeah, adding that in to the ones we already have. Well, no, this is a, you. You would not get ejected without a review. So, so the play would happen. They'd throw the flag, and then they'd review it. And if if they decided on review that it wasn't a malicious hit to the head, it wasn't launching. Uh, you know, it wasn't. Uh, his intent was not to, to, to make the kind of play that would, should result in ejection, then the player is not ejected, the penalty would stand. Um, but the problem is, is that you know, the emotion, the passion on the field, the intensity on the field that the players feel and the officials feel, I think makes it really hard to, to diagnose those things. You know? so, uh, but like I said, it's a rule, we have to live with it. Don't like it, don't agree with it, but we're gonna we're gonna go with it. Yeah, I was speaking to the time of the game too, like oh. like extending the time of the game. Like with, we already have a lot of reviews as it is. Oh, it I don't seems. care about that. Doesn't bother you? No, okay. I'm not too worried about commercials and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, or if we miss the start of Lassie, you know, I just want to I just want him to get it right. <laughs> what's what's the biggest Jim. difference with Devin Fuller uh, between the end of last season and this camp? Well, he looks like a. Uh, he looks like a receiver rather than a quarterback trying to play receiver. You know, like his routes are much better. Um, his change of pace in running his routes is better. He's in and out of his breaks cleaner. He seems to catch it a lot cleaner. You know, you'll see every once in a while he'll, he'll bobble the ball, but not very often. Um, he's got great bursts, which we knew, but he's got, I think now, better body control running his routes. And uh, he's a fabulous athlete. I mean, I think we all recognize that. The guy's just got special skills. And sometimes, maybe you don't appreciate it as much because he makes it look so darned easy. You know, he's, just, he's just effortless in the way he moves. Is that one of those guys you can look at and maybe he's one of the more likely guys to break out, I guess, on offense? Compared to what yeah, he did I would think season? so. 
Yeah, I mean, you you know, I think in the Pac-12 championship game, he had seven catches. I think he had a touchdown yeah, too. Yeah, and he was just starting to learn the position. The thing about Devin is, you know, he could he could probably be one of the best safeties in the country too. You know, if he played that position, he was a heck of a safety in in high school. So, but we're not we're not looking at those. I shouldn't even said anything. Why didn't open my mouth there? Your defensive backs. I do. I do. I do. What, He's a good player. Wouldn't moving Priest to safety solve that problem? Oh, yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> Where's Tracy? <laughs> he's a corner. Yeah, he's a corner. <laughs> So anyway, I think we had a little, a uh, little bit of a wall, you know. We worked hard last night, hurt hard yesterday, but I think that, that it'll be interesting to see how we get over it, how to get through it. And I think we will, you know. It's kind of a well-timed evening off. Yeah, I think really the timing's really good, you know. Um, you you got to push these guys, and you got to see how far you can push them. But then you have to be smart, you know. Um, and you get a feel for a practice and the energy and, you know, uh, they've been really good, you know. And they were fine today. They were, they were trying, but there was just a little bit of a wall we hit. So I think it'll be really good for us to get this evening off. And, you know, coming out of yesterday's practice, was those, they were long, they were grueling. Get back at it. Uh, I think we'll have a lot of energy tomorrow. And then I know that, you know, guys, once we get back to campus, that gives you another little boost as well. So I like where we're at as a team right now. Think how rested they'd be if they had Friday and Saturday off. Too. Yeah, like <laughs> well, they're not getting it, so you have to. Uh, <laughs> thought I could slip that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm calling sick. Are the injuries making you more conscious of, of how often you want to go live during practice? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is just a delicate dance, you know, um, and that's why yesterday, you know, we went with the young guys scrimmage, you know, um, guys that really haven't played a lot in games and had that live contact in a Pac-12 game. Because they need, there's young guys, they need to get that work. They need the full speed, they, you know, they need those, the collisions. They need to feel what it's going to feel like to go full speed and, and live. Um, but I don't want to put us in too many situations where there's 22 UCLA Bruins going after each other. You know, if, if you had a scrimmage against a, another team or you had a preseason game, you'd have 11 UCLA Bruins on the field at one time. So your chances of someone getting injured are cut in half. When you go against each other and you've got 22 UCLA Bruins going against each other, it doubles your chances of getting someone hurt, and I don't really like that a lot. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to try to see if we can get a couple of preseason games next year. <laughs> we're going to suit you guys up. <laughs> Didn't they used to have like the media old alumni challenge. games? They yeah. bring the alumni back. I think we need a media challenge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you sit no. <laughs> right on deadline in a story, we'll go out there and play football. Yeah, you know, I just, you do know that I was the sports editor of the, uh, of the uh, W. Soothsayer, you know, Interlake Soothsayer when I was at Interlake High School. Nice. So, did you, did you get tired of the coach's policies? No. <laughs> no. I spent my time in the media. Yeah. <laughs> two years. Two years plus my senior years in high school. I got, yeah. a life, I got a life sentence. I did, you my, got off after I two did, years. I did my service. <laughs> so. Anyway. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, uh, 8.30 and 6.